Okay, welcome back. So for this uh, part, I thought we'd, uh, for a change of pace, build one of the structures. So I think we'll do this cabin here, which uh, sits up in the top deck. I think it could be the bridge actually. The instructions show us that uh, it's a very simple part really, just a rectangle box. Uh, the one skin goes all the way, a couple of doors, a roof, and it does have an internal framework, which we have here. Paper parts themselves, I like to keep in a, a document wallet, just to keep them safe and free from damage. So if we have a look here, as you can see, 74 is the, the cabin itself. We've got two doors and we've got the roof here. For the parts, what I like to do is just use uh, a segmented blade here. You can snap them off as they become blunt. And we'll just free the parts from the, from the sheet. When you do this, try and keep uh, the numbers with the parts because it will save any hassle later down the track when you come to find out what parts what and you've lost the number or if it tells you to I can't see any here if it tells you to maybe do some other action if you lose that number you won't know if you're supposed to do that so just cut them up roughly because it will make it easier the handle with that. Okay. So that's all the parts we need for this this assembly. And we'll go through each of these. So now that this is uh, now that we've removed the parts, we'll return this to the sleeve. So next thing is to cut out the the laser cut form. We've seen this in a couple of the previous parts, so I'll, I'll skip through this. Okay, so with them cut out, what we do is we'll assemble this first and we'll do a dry fit again because I want to show you something before you actually glue it. So that's the underlying form for the carbon. Now, the reason I wanted to do a dry fit is uh, I want to show you the relationship with this. We just want to check that the uh, structure is the correct size. So what you can do is if we place it onto there, I'm not sure if you can see, but the uh, it needs to be within the upper and lower boundaries, which it is. This tells you if the roof section, because depending on the structure, the roof may sit inside the skin or the skin might go up to the roof. And this kind of tells us that this will sit on top. We know that anyway, because there's a border around the, the edge of the roof anyway, so. But it's always worthwhile checking. On the Borodino guns, these forms were a bit, about one millimeter too high, so we had to trim them. So that's why we want to check before we glue, okay? But now that we're assured that that's the correct way, we can glue these up now. And then that's it. So I'm not going to clean up the glue inside, it's, it's, it's fine. And then what we'll do is I'll show you how I do other treatment on it, uh, which is strictly not necessary, but I, I like to do it. So next stage is we'll cut out the, we'll cut out the side and the, the doors. Again, I'll just separate the parts roughly to begin with. Okay. 
just makes them easier to handle. So I like to use, uh, for straight cuts anyway, the Swan Morton with the number 11 scalpels. And also when you're cutting, if you place the ruler on the part side, so when you're cutting, if you, if you have a bit of an accident or you go offline, you're going into the waste and not into the part. So uh, don't cut it this way because you might damage the part. Okay. So just take the, the rule up to the line. And if, because of the angle of the blade, it, it's got a 30 de a 25 degree bevel on it. You need to uh, angle it so you get a straight cut. And two or three cuts is fine. If it's a brand new blade, two cuts would do the job. And then that's it. Okay. And then same on the bottom. Sometimes, if you if you come and it's rocking like that, if you kind of get it straight and come up at an angle, you'll find it easier sometimes. And then, there we go. And that's a piece cut up. So, what I should have done firstly, so, is, as you can see, there's windows here, and they've just represented it with a, a bluey gray color. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I actually prefer to cut the windows out and then put a film behind it. So, the foam, it will be blackish, but it's shiny, so it looks like reflective glass. And then, because it's black, it just looks like it's dark inside. So we'll come and have a look at how I do that. The interesting point to note on here is also, is you might be able to make out there's a little tick mark, top and bottom. So that will be the center of this sheet. Uh, on the carbon frame, it looks like these edges are, are rounded, so they haven't put the corners on the, the paper either. Typically, if it was like a sharp corner, you would see that tick mark, you'd see other ones as well, where the bend is. So what we need to do is we need to mark on here the center so we can see where the bends are going to be. But it'll essentially look more or less like that because the drawing the drawing shows the door on the back edge. So that's how it's going to sit. Okay. Or if you like more correctly so I was going to sit. And then we'll fold it down and round it back. So because I've left a little mark here, I'll get rid of that first because when we're trying to trim that off a little part, it's a lot harder. So let's just remove that now. Okay. Also, it doesn't really matter a great deal, but the doors have got hinges and a knob and we've got a left and right. We can cut them both out 
we know that's the top and that's the bottom and then we know we've got a hinge hinge and the doorknob so we'll know what side to put it on whether it's a P or L. If it wasn't so clear I would write on the back the actual number. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll come back and colour these shortly, but what we'll do is I'll show you how show you how I do the roof now. So the roof, as you can see, uh, it's in two halves, you've got the, the wood effect in the upper half. And in the lower half, the 73B is this. So it's just telling you that glue's there. And the fact that there's a thick black line suggests that this overhangs the cabin slightly, or the, the wheelhouse or bridge. So it's got the fold mark as per the legend. And it's actually, in this case, it's got a line. So what, I, what I'll do, is I'll just score, I won't cut right through. So I want to make sure. So I'll just score through, I won't cut all the way because it's a fold line. So that was two light passes. And then what you see if you start to bend it. You can see it's folded. So the next step is we'll glue this up. And then once it's fully glued and then we can cut it out. If you cut out the two halves first, trying to glue them and line up the straight edges may be difficult. So let's glue it together first. And then if you cut from the top, it doesn't matter if this is slightly out of place, it'll just get trimmed the same and plus you won't see the underside of it once it's glued down. So by gluing them together and then cutting them, you're going to ensure that they're a smooth flush cut. Okay. So for gluing this up, what I like to do is use sheets of glass. Because the, the PVA glue we use is water-based, uh, you don't want the, the paper wrinkling up. So we'll be quite liberal here. Make sure it's fully wetted. We don't need two halves coming apart. If we close them up. And then we just place it under the glass. And we'll leave it there for for a time uh, and once it's fully dry we know that it will dry flat. What I want to do with this is I want to get some uh, card and we'll just reinforce the corners. I like to eliminate the potential for when the paper's on or the, the skin's on that we don't push between the spaces. When you're squeezing it with your fingers, it's very easy to push the paper in the gap and then it becomes buckled. Also, when we're handling it for gluing this up, this isn't too bad because it's quite small, but you run the risk of depressing these corners and pressing them in. So we'll just cut some, uh, I'll use two mil card and we'll fill in the gaps. It doesn't have to be the full thing but just for the corners. I've also found where 
it's not a sharp corner where it's kind of rounded. Uh, sometimes on the bend of the paper, it kind of sinks in a wee bit. So if we fill this up with card, uh, that will prevent that happening as well. Okay, so I'll do that next while we wait for the, the roof to dry. So now we'll do the window treatments on, on the carbon. So I have done one of the doors, which if you can see that reflection. Uh, on a whole, it looks quite good, except in this case, because it's got black panels at the bottom, the effect's kind of reduced a bit. But I've already done it, so we'll do the rest of them. In hindsight, I might have left it in this case. My preferred method for cutting out little squares and that is to grind down some blades into a chisel shape. And we use these to slice. You can do it by hand. Because they're so small, you run the risk of overextending the cut. So I'll, I'll use my usual method for this. So I'm just doing a bit of wood because the cutting mat is actually a bit soft, so it pushes through before it cuts. So, uh, I just use a knife handle. Okay. And I just use a ruler, not to hold it in position, but more to uh, hold the paper down when I'm finished to cut. So we'll just work all the way through. So we'll just change up the blade. Okay, as you can see, one's came out already. Uh, the rest hopefully just pop up. Come back to this one a bit. Of, so if it's not going to fall out easily, we can come back and redo them again. So it seems to be that top top one. We can go through that. Just close them up. Because we don't want to actually have ragged edges if we pull them off. So we've got a couple of top one here down this edge. So what I'll do is um, I'll go back to the, the smaller one because I think the smaller one's a bit sharper. Okay, so there we go. That's a little cut up. So the next thing we want to do is we want to colour the paper because you might be able to see that it's actually white, obviously. And we'll colour the edges as well. Uh, a number of things to use. In this case, I like to use uh, these Faber-Castell uh, Pit artist pens, and this one here, Raw Umber 180, is actually a fairly good color match. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but you don't want the white edges showing. the The good thing about these pens are, is they don't bleed through uh, the paper, so they stay on the edges. So when you come to to do these. Come in from the back side. If you come in from the front, if you slip, you can mark the, the, the color. 
So if you come in from the, try to keep this in color, come in from the back edge, you can actually just run it along. Not sure if we can get this in camera for you. Okay. And then you just go around the, around the part. So some pens I've seen, you just touch the edge and the, the color just bleeds right through. And again, we just do the same for the, for the windows. Normally, I would, uh, it's a bit hard to try and keep it on camera for you. So I'll just start in the corners. And then once you do all four corners, just the... Uh, so I might finish this off camera, just because it's very awkward at this angle, okay? So that's all the edges uh, covered. So now for the, the glass. So depending on your age, you may or may not be familiar with uh, these floppy disks. They're a bit historic now, but if you take them apart, what you get is a very thin mylar sheet, which is very, uh, very strong. So we will cut strips out to match. So you don't want to be overly large. So what we do is we just, we just get a rough measurement, just so we've got a bit of a, an overlap. So five and a half millimeters, sorry, four and a half millimeters, if we cut a strip to that. The best way to cut these is with uh, scissors because when you use a knife, you, you do get a bit of a raised edge. Uh, we'll try it anyway. We just do lots of little cuts because we don't want to raise any edges. That's not too bad. So four and a half more. So let's have a look. Now, because there's quite a bit of a gap, you could actually do individual ones. And that's what I've done in the past. Or we can just fold it up. Or in this case, we might actually just, we'll, we'll do it in one, one piece. So, I'll do one and then I'll do the rest off camera just to show you. So again, just using PVA is, is more than strong enough, which I like to just water down a wee bit. We'll just brush around. So as you can see, that's, that's up and down. So I'll just do the other two strips and then we'll come back. So that's the, the rest of them. Only took a, an extra couple of minutes there. So hopefully you can see the reflectiveness of the, the mylar sheet. And then on the back there. So on the back, I've kind of made the positions of where the bends will be. Because it's a gentle or a round curve, I'm still going to do a bit of work on here, which we'll come to in a second. So that's this 
finish other than just putting some bends in, but we'll come back to that. The, the internal form, as you see, just use two mil uh, cardboard and just fill them in. I haven't bothered doing it all the way around, there's no need. It just gives you a nice farm area without worrying about crushing or pushing the paper into the inside the form and it holds the edges up uh, as well rather than squeezing them so it's now quite a, a, a nice farm box to work with and here's the uh, carbon roof so as you can see it's came out nice and flat and the two thickness of paper makes it relatively stiff which is good so we'll cut that out next i'm going to replace this blade uh, so here's a new blade uh, i like to buy my blades in packs of 100 just because i use so many of them and they're a lot cheaper if you buy them in bulk so using a pair of along those pliers, try not to touch the, the cutting edge obviously because that's and then that's it. So remember this is double thickness so we'll take a, a few more cuts even though it's a new blade. And again we don't want to rush through so just going up to the edge. There we Okay, now you may be able to see, I mentioned that this uh, carbon isn't sharp edged, it's got rounded edges. So you can see the white corners. So what you can do, got a couple of options, just take this small chisely type one we made previously. You could just use the heel of this one and rock it. But that's another technique I'll show you when I cut the tire circles. So we just use the chisel. Don't know if you can hear it uh, on camera, but there's a satisfying slicing noise. So that's came up well. We'll just again, we'll just colour it with the, this brown one. Now, let's just see how good what uh, gluing together was. If you remember on the underside, there was a thick black line. So if it was lined up properly, you should still retain that. So uh, yeah, we've got it down one side, this side, kind of lost it on there. It doesn't matter because this is face down, but it just gives you an indication of how well your alignment was. So we'll just call this as well. I don't know if you can see, but you can actually see the two layers of paper with the color on it. I guess the glue is interfering with the, the ink, but the fact that it hasn't separated or split or whatever when we came to cut. Shows we've got a good strong bond. So that's the roof done. So all that remains now is we'll glue the 
cabin wall around the farm, put the doors on and then, then the lid. So I went in here to mark the center at, at the cabin, at the farm, which kind of should correspond with the tick mark here. So based on the dimensions, if we hold it, you might not be able to see, if we hold it on, hopefully the lines kind of mark show up. So that's where we want to perform the bends. And if you to rock over like this, Okay, that line's slightly off. That one's slightly off as well. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the edge rather than on a line. The thickness of this mylar, it's like 0 0.05 mil. So it doesn't really affect uh, or push out the paper just because it's so thin. So what I'll use uh, is this embossing tool it just came from the craft store so it's good for uh, it kind of crushes the paper fibers so it's got a bit of space to fold into if you don't do something at the back when you fold it the paper bunches up and then you, you can't get a tight bend. Okay. And then for this one here, what I'll do is I'll hold it to the side. So that's now in a a nice depression and then if you, if you look at the other side you can't see uh, a bit on this one probably did that a bit too hard but that's fine it should be on the bend anyway so the next stage is to line up the tick marks and glue it and then we'll, we'll fold it around so for the gluing we need to uh, check to see how far it sits in. So as you can see, it sits a bit above. So what I do in all my structures like this is I always ensure the top is flush because that way uh, if it sticks down past, that's fine because typically these will sit on uh, maybe a carved deck. So if you have this flush here, it means it's going to rock on the deck. Having it flush here, typically uh, it's a platform for guns or lights or whatever, so it's always flat. So I always do the top edge flush, which means I'm kind of working upside down. Normally I do it upside down on glass, but I can't see the tick marks in this case. So uh, I'll do it by hand and then put it upside down just for final alignment. For this, I'm just, I'm using undiluted glue uh, and we'll just go along the bottom edge, along the top edge. I want to align the tick marks And I want to make sure it's flat. Okay. And then just using a ruler to press it home. Just a bit of pressure on. So that's the first edge done. And as you can see, it, it grips already. Uh, the neat glue, there's not a lot of it into the paper, 
it's a very quick bond and if we turn it over you can just you might hopefully be able to see just how much there's a bit of a ledge if we do this flush at the bottom potentially depending where it's going to sit it may rock so we've now got a bit of free play if we need to adjust anything for it to sit flat and then we've got a nice flat surface uh, in this case for for this roof we'll start forming the other sides so what i like to do is remember we've put it upside down so we don't damage our edge is let's start forming the bends so we want to make sure that it maintains the flat surface okay so what i mean the flat surface is the bottom edge which is the top which will be flush with the rest of it is actually staying flush in that in that bend in an angle so when by the time it comes round, it's raised in one edge. So this one is good. And then we'll, we'll do the same on this side. So I like to use a ruler just to get a nice even pressure and form the corner as we go around. Okay. So with the, the two bends established, if we hold it down, you can see the flush with the top, which is perfect. It's what we're after. So now we can uh, we can apply the glue now to paint on the edges. And then hold it down and we'll just bend it around and then that's it formed okay so as you can see it popped out to top that just pressing it down So we should do the same for the other side. And just squeezing it between two rollers, we've got an even pressure uh, on both sides. So that's why I like to have it filled in because uh, if you're applying pressure with your fingers on the edge, the ends here, we didn't fully enclose. So you, you could potentially distort it. Okay, so we'll form the back up now. So just giving it a bit of a press. Uh, again, we'll just run some glue on the main edges. So when we bend this last section over, you can see there's a bit of an overlap. Uh, so we need to trim a part of the edge here.
So hopefully you can see the two lines there. And that's what we need to trim off. So we'll just move the bump from the line. And then, of course, we'll color the edge. And then, as you can see, it's a perfect fit now. Okay, so we'll get some glue onto that. Okay, so what I was talking about previously about when you fold it over, you want to make sure that this line, as you can see, this end wall here has moved. Because I can actually see very slightly a section of the top roof. And as you can see, the joint here is maybe just enough to cut your nail. You could come in and shave this area down a wee bit. Uh, but if I have a look at the roof. It's not going to affect it too much. So I think I'll just leave it. So what I'll do is I'll just come in with a pen here. And just color this section. This this area here is fine. The front is fine. It's just this back edge here. But by coloring it, it will disappear. Will become a shadow. What I might do is I was just to make sure I'll just come in here and just color the edge here. It just eliminates any white if we're off center a bit because again you don't want any white edges on sure. So by coloring this in you eliminate any or any misalignment will be hidden. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so this is L. If we have a look at the, this would be that. So P in the hinges is on the towards the front with the door knob towards the back. Okay, so that would be this one here. So we'll just drive. We'll just drive fit it. Uh, Sometimes if you over, <coughs> if you cut it too small, you run the risk of showing white. But I think this will be okay. Again, what you could do is, you could just come in with your pen and just color around the edge. And then that way, any misalignment again, you're not showing any white. So what we'll do is again, using the PVA glue, I'll paint the door rather than the thing. And this is diluted again. It doesn't need a great deal of gripping power. It, so I'll just line this up.
again we'll just press it with the ruler to fix it and then uh, that's one door we'll do the next one you don't want to over apply the glue because you don't want it oozing out the sides and that's why you're using the uh, the watered down PVA has nothing to, to squeeze on. So as you can see, I didn't bother colouring in behind it because I'm comfortable that the doors an okay size. Again, we'll just squeeze it position and then that's the other door done so that just remains uh, the roof of the cabin to do now so we'll just loosely put it on because we want to see okay there's going to be a, a tiny overhang on the, the the wide side and not much of an overhang on that side so I'll just, uh, so we'll be a bit more liberal with the, the glue, but we don't want to, again, uh, have it too much that it's going to squeeze up. And that's why I'm kind of keeping back from the edges. But by having quite a, a thing of glue, it means we've got a bit more playtime with it. because we want to have time to check that the, the border all the way around is kind of equal before we uh, apply pressure and fix it. So that's looking not too bad. Yeah. So we'll fix it in that position now. Yeah, so I'm just pressing down a bit hard. I can do it in the center because we've got the cross. And that's the front cabin. I think it's a bridge. That's that finished.